We are in Chicago at ACC 16 and a new paper in Jack Heart Failure discusses whether systemic low-grade inflammation contributes to diastolic left ventricular dysfunction at heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And to do this, I'm talking about, uh, there's an accompanying editorial uh, entitled Inflammation in Heart Failure Preserved Ejection Fraction is a Time to Put Out the Fire. So this is the author, Dr. Sanjeev Shah, who is an MD and an Associate Professor of Medicine and Cardiology at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Dr. Shah, before we get started, the one thing I wanted to talk about at first is HEFPEF, as it's known, has been really difficult to treat. So what's the background suggesting that inflammation may play a role here? Well, I think, first of all, the comorbidities are so common in heart failure with preserved EF. And that's one of the things we've focused on for years. In fact, several years ago in JAMA, we wrote an editorial basically saying, sure, there are no treatments for this syndrome right now, but you can treat now by treating the comorbidities because comorbidities are so common in this syndrome. Now, we think that the syndrome of heart failure with preserved EF is above and beyond the comorbidities. It's not just a collection of comorbidities, but that those comorbidities play an integral role in driving an inflammatory process. So each one of those comorbidities creates inflammation in the body, and we think that's why this is driving the syndrome. So your editorial comment is to a paper entitled Microvascular Inflammatory Endothelial Activation in Heart Failure with Preserved Ejection Fraction. So tell me about what the investigators did. Well, it was, it was really an elegant investigation. I mean, they did two things. One, they looked in an animal model. Now, just to take a step back, trying to find an animal model that actually recapitulates heart failure with preserved EF has been challenging. But they've really, uh, I think, really done a good job in finding an animal model that really resembles the clinical syndrome, which isn't easy to do. They have these rats that develop hypertension. On top of that, they're obese. And they have a lot of metabolic abnormalities that we see in the humans that get this syndrome. So they studied those types of rats, but they also studied humans who had left ventricular biopsies. I mean, that's really difficult to get. Basically, in, you know, in those patients, they got the heart muscle tissue and they analyzed that as well, and they were obese, so they could really kind of tie the animal model with the humans. So what did they find? So what they found was, you know, all along, these group of investigators have been hypothesizing that inflammation drives coronary endothelial dysfunction through a nitric oxide pathway that decreases cyclic GMP, and then that decreases protein kinase G. Now what that does is it leads to decreased compliance or increased stiffness of the ventricle and diastolic dysfunction through hypophosphorylation of a big protein called Titan. So that's what they found in both the animal model and in the human study. And so I think what this particular study in Jack Heart Failure was all about was sort of proving what their hypothesis was. I guess the question which you raise in your own editorial comment is why is this study important and how do these parallel human and basic science analyses enhance knowledge in the field? We really need that translational science going back and forth. One of the things we talk about in the editorial is this concept of a T1 sort of translational clinical trial. So what's a T1 uh, concept? That's sort of the concept that basically in animal models we often find discoveries and then we wait for a long time to translate that into humans. We do phase one studies, phase two studies, phase three. And so it can be several years from a discovery in an animal model to testing in humans. And what we're saying is that we should jumpstart that process by doing a T1 study, that as soon as we find a, something in the animal model, we should translate that to the human and do these detailed mechanistic studies early on. And so we don't know if everybody with heart failure preserved EF, which is a heterogeneous syndrome, has inflammation and coronary endothelial dysfunction in this whole process, but there's probably a big subset that's obese, that has metabolic syndrome, that really does suffer from this. And why don't we take those particular patients, kind of like the investigators did in their study, and focus on them and do these mechanistic studies in the patients with different therapies to see if we can really target this coronary endothelial dysfunction hypothesis or downstream the cyclic GMP PKG process. Well, I thought this was an interesting paper and I, I really enjoyed your editorial comment too, so I appreciate your time. And the paper and the editorial comment uh, by Dr. Shaw are in the April Jack Heart Failure. Please check that out. For CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.